Hello everyone, welcome to Jennifer's Sewing and Creativity. If it's your first time joining my channel, welcome. If you are a previous subscriber or you are coming from another video on my channel, welcome back. <coughs> Excuse me. Today we're going to be continuing with the HD screen on the Creative FAF 4.0 and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and you're going to see the welcome screen and then it's going to go right to the main screen. So you are going to hear a noise when I turn it on and the noise is perfectly normal for a embroidery machine. It is the needle and the if I had the um, embroidery unit plugged into the machine um, it would you would hear it calibrating its, itself so you're gonna hear that it does take a minute for it to come up since it is a computerized sewing machine the computer is actually booting itself so this is your welcome screen <coughs> excuse me and that noise was the, the machine calibrating itself. Sorry, I had to take a little drink there. Okay. So in the previous video, we went over the start view, the main parts of the machine, your task bar, which is this portion down here at the bottom. Then you have your... Over here, you had your options bar, which is this section right here. And we, I told you everything, what, what the buttons are on here. And then some of the common icons, we went over that. I went over the touch features. That um, the touch features, when you bring up menus, you'll have, a, I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, then you, um, on some of the items that um, you have to do a long touch for them to come up. And what we're going to do today is we are going to go over the selection menu and what that covers. And I showed you yesterday that when you go to some screens, the screen's going to look a lot different. So if you go to your embroidery screen, so that is your embroidery screen and these this portion here are your touch feature buttons to uh, um, move everything around and to edit and things like that we'll switch back to the sewing menu screen and that is that and that little click that you're hearing um, if you have your embroidery unit on the machine you're gonna want to hit your button here and you're going to want to hit it because it calibrates the arm of the embroidery unit so you can take it off and it's in a safe storage mode. It moves the arm of the embroidery unit to a safe position and I will go over that a little bit more when we get to the embroidery editing and things like that. I will show you how to do that. Okay. So what we're going to start with today is we're going to start with our selections menu. And what your selections menu is, is this little button right down here. It just looks like a bunch of little, um, I don't know what you call it, but just some little squares stacked up on top of each other. And if you're in your embroidery mode or in your sewing mode, you're, you're always going to have these four buttons here. And your selection menu will look different for each mode that you are in. But we're going to start with our selection. So I'm going to hit that. And it switches to this screen. And what this goes over is you have your selections bar. And that is right here, all down here at the bottom. So you're going to have your stitches, you're going to have your fonts, you're going to have your designs. Oh, hang on just a moment. That was Luna the Crafty Kitty, and she just hit the arm for the camera tripod there, the camera mount. She's going to come and say hi. She's getting up on her 
I have this thread stand here in the background and I have to keep all my cones of thread in there to keep her from playing with them. And she likes to lay up on top of that. So let's let her get situated for a minute. And she's going to lay right here and going to help me go through the manual. <laughs> okay. So I was, I was saying that this is your selection menu overview. This is your selection bar. Um, this one was your stitches, your fonts, your designs. Okay. And let's go back to the first one. Okay, so that's your, your stitches, your fonts. These are just the built-in fonts that are on the machine. You can... Um, load a USB stick and add more fonts to your machine. So that's that. Then we have our design and there's Luna's head. <laughs> Luna is, we call her the mascot of my channel. And for those of you that have never joined my channel before, watched one of my videos, you will see her in videos. Um, I say that this is her house as well, and I'm not going to stop her from being here. Um, I will move her, though, if anything is unsafe. So, anyway, adds a little bit of comedy to the, to the videos. <laughs> okay, and then um, our last one was our files and folders. And this is going to show you... Um, your personnel file, your personnel, personal files, and it will show you what's in the machine. And those are the designs. It'll show you, I have some bookmarks that I created that um, I have, a, have them all laid out in a certain order so I can stitch out more on the embroidery hoop. And then we have our personal fonts, um, this will be our personal files, and then if I have a USB plugged in, that will be here. Okay, and then um, for, let's go back to our, okay, we'll just, we're going to go back here, oh, there we go. Okay, so I will fumble a little bit with it still. I've only had this machine since the 28th. So I'm still, well, the 28th of last month. I am still learning a lot on this machine. Um, it takes quite a bit to get from one screen to the next for each step that you're going to be doing. So um, I can understand the original owner of this machine only had nine confirmed hours working on this machine. It was five embroidery hours and three sewing hours. So the machine sat for a while and I bought this machine used on eBay and I paid, I paid $1,800 for it. And then with the tax and the shipping, it was just over 2000. So I think it was like 21. So, um, it is a older model. The newer model is the um, up from this one is the FAF Creative 4.5, and then they go up from there also. Um, okay, I'm kind of getting off track. Okay, um, I mentioned in the previous video when we were going over the first part of the HD screen that. Um, I could not find a lot of videos about this particular machine. I'm not sure why. Um, I found videos on the 3.0, on the 4.5, and the newer models, but there aren't a lot of videos on the Creative 4.0. So I thought I would change that, and I'm going to do all the videos like I did for my brother SE625 machine. Um, that way, for any of you that do purchase um, a, a Creative 4.0, you can still find them online. Just do a search for FAF Creative 4.0 Embroidery Sewing Machine. 
make sure you do include embroidery sewing machine because there is a different model of the Creative 4.0 that's just the sewing machine only. I had somebody ask me on my Facebook group in um, a private, they DM'd me a direct uh, private message that they said, well, I researched this machine and it's nowhere near the price that you're, you're saying that you paid for it. Well, that is because they just did the machine only. I have found prices just for the machine. Um, the cheapest one I saw was $795, and that was still a bid on eBay. That wasn't the what it was selling for. So um, I have seen some as high as $995. But um, with my particular machine, I got the largest embroidery unit and things like that. And it came with all the original equipment um, accessories. Um, I do have a video on that also. Okay, so we're going to get back to our, our screen here. So we talked about your selections bar. Then we have your stitch categories here. We have your utility stitches, and it'll tell you right here at the top, your utility stitches. You have one through five. Then you have your, let's see where, your, um, I'm trying to look at the, my manual here at the same time. So your 2A is your utility stitches, your 2B, is going to be your quilting stitches, your number three, which is um, 2C in the manual, is your needle art stitches. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and just hit them. Okay, so you have your down here, it brought up. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. I'm not sure what it changed. Okay. Let's go back here. Okay, yes, it did. Okay, so for your utility stitches, this is what they are down here. And then um, the bar will show you. It'll scroll through all of them as well. But let's go back to our... Okay, so we got our utility stitches. Then you can hit it and go directly to your quilting stitches. And that's what these ones are. So you've got your, um, your straight stitches. I think this one is, um, it mimics hand quilting. Then you have like your, um, for your applique. And then we have C, which is this one. These are your needle art stitches all down here. So these look like um, cross stitch. You can mimic stitches that look like cross stitch. Then we have your decorative stitches, which is this one. And that brings up. Okay, so just for in your decorative stitches, that's these here. So it's got some of your, your scallop stitches, things like that. And then this one will be if you have any personal stitches, you can program stitches, and that's where you got one through 16. You can save some stitches. Okay, and then let's go back to number one. Let's go back to one. Okay, so number three is your essential stitches, and these are gonna be your stitch subcategories. So you'll have, and this one was your just your, your, like your zigzags and things like that. Then you have your um, like overlock stitches, I believe these are called, and then your, um, you can use some of these for um, Quilting applique, things like that. Then this one is your buttonhole. And then number four, we have, um, I'm 
not sure what that one is. I can't remember what these ones. It's it's some decorative stitches. And then number five. Let's see where number five here is. Is you clear your personal menu, which is only visible if personal menu is selected. And that is right here. And this is number five. So if you if you have your personal menu selected, you can clear your personal menu with the trash can. And that's you, you're just going to do a long hold. So it's going to tell you if you do your long hold, that's what that little arrow is there, is you're going to delete all your stitches in the current subcategory. So that'll be that. So you'll hit yes, or you can hit close. So, and then this one's just a, you close. Okay. So let's go back to one. And then you're going to be able to select a stitch. So to select a stitch, you're going to first select a category at the top, which is up here is your categories. So we're going to just go with one. And for each category, there are one or more subcategories. So these were your subcategories. So you got here for your, for your um, quilting stitches, you got your hand look stitches. You've got your antique quilt stitches. So these would be something that you would do like if you're doing like crazy quilting and you just want to go over like the, the, um, the, the seams or you just want to do some decorative elements. That would be those. Then we have your like, um, what kind of looks like your stippling. Um, I typically do not like the stippling look because um, it's really small. If you're going to be doing a small area, it's okay. But if you're doing an overall quilt, you would not use this. Okay. And then the fourth one is your crazy patch stitches. So this is when you further get into more of the crazy quilt look. You've got all your little fancier stitches that you can use with that. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go back to here and we are going to go back to your personal menu, which is this one. And to find your personal save stitches, you're going to open your personal menu and then you're going to have a um, subcategory. Okay, which was, they were going to be, um, I guess these here would be your subcategories. Um, each subcategory in the personal menu has 16 positions. So for this one, you're going to have 16. For that one, you're going to have 16. And all the way one through eight, each one's going to have 16. So you can, you can really do a lot of programming of your own stitches and we're going to get to that later on um, okay and um, to select a stitch you're just going to touch it and then if you want to delete one stitch you're going to first touch the delete icon and and when you touch the stitch the position will be emptied so and then to um, Stop the deletion before selecting a stitch. You're just going to deselect the icon. So if you notice that it's not selected right now because it's lit up, when I hit it, it, it kind of changes, and that's when it's selected. Okay. And then a long touch of the delete icon will empty the whole subcategory. So make sure... That's where this comes up. Make sure it's always going to pop up with a window like this. So it's going to protect you that if you do something by mistake, make sure that you read everything that pops up. Don't just assume. Um, that way you won't have any accidents deleting any of your stitches that you've taken the, the time to create because they will take some time to create. You don't want to accidentally delete those. Okay. So there's that. We're going to close that one. And then we're going to go to the next menu. 
and that is selecting a font, which is the A at the bottom. And then to stitch, um, stitch fonts are indicated with a gray background. So if you see your gray background here, um, and the embroidery fonts will have a pink background. So you can see the, the gray and, oops, let's go back here. Okay. Oops. I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go back to here. I don't know what I did. Okay. So now we're back to our, sorry about that, our fonts. So you do have to be really careful with hitting on the, on the, on here. Um, like I said, I'm still learning it. So there is so much that this machine can do that um, always have your manual with you when you're doing anything because unless you use it all the time and you know what you're doing, um, that way you will know. Okay. So as I was saying, your stitch fonts are indicated with a gray background and your embroidery fonts will have a pink background. So I'm going to hit the embroidery. Um, I need to go back. So we're going to close this and go back to this. And it's not going to let me do that. Okay, let me. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so let me go back to here. Okay, so this is our embroidery, and you'll see that these backgrounds are gray, and you'll see that this background is all pink, and that's where it, where the manual's telling you that um, your backgrounds will be different colors. Okay, so and to select a font, let's go back to fonts. To select, excuse me, to select a font. You're just going to touch it. So let's do um, let's do a script font, something really pretty. So it's loading, and you will see that they all change to a script look. And when your embroidery font is selected, the embroidery text editor will open automatically. And you can select a different size for each font. And the embroidery fonts are only visible if the embroidery mode is active and neither sequence nor stitch creator is active. Okay, so I don't have my embroidery fonts up because I don't have my embroidery unit on. So um, it's not gonna show on there. When we do get to the embroidery section, we will go over that again. Um, we haven't even got to the, to the sewing mode yet, so we're still working on just the, the HD screen. Okay, so then you can go to Embroidery Edit. Let me go back, excuse me. I'm going to go back to here. And Embroidery Edit is going to be, you can change your colors. You can change your size, your position, and your rotation. And go back to here. I'm going to close this. And go back to the embroidery. And then this is your embroidery screen. And this is your embroidery editing screen. So you're, you can change your colors. with. You'll see a spool. And since I do not have an embroidery design selected, let's see, let me go back. And we're just going to select one just to let you see. Okay, we're just going to pop up with the butterfly. Okay, so it's loading the image in. It loaded the image in, and you can look at it larger. You can do like so. And you can also combine, save, restore, and delete images all from this screen. So I can hit 
my delete, delete all designs, and I hit yes. So that's going to wipe out the design. But let me go back and we're going to select that again. Let's get a different image on there, something that's a little more color. Okay. Okay, so this is loading in with a sunflower. And you can go lower. You can change it. Um, this one. And I was trying to do a whole image, but I'm not sure how to do that one yet. Um, so this is going to let you do your file. It's going to let you change your hoop size, but for color, we're going to hit the color, the little spool, and it brings up every color in your menu for that this image uses. And if you want to change th this particular green, then you're going to hit this. See how it highlighted it? So that's like that. Then you're going to highlight that and then you're going to hit your colors here and you can pick through what your colors are that you want to use and that lets you change them so say i just want to do a really deeper green and then i'm going to just hit that green and then i'm going to okay it and that lets you change your your colors okay so there's that then you're going to, let's get out of here. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to delete this image. Delete all designs, yes. Your check mark. And now what we want to do is we want to go and we want to do an embroidery text editor. Um, comes up and okay so now I'm in embroidery mode because I, I had switched that screen and these are our embroidery fonts and remember I told you that the sewing these were your sewing and that um, I had said that the Stitch fonts are indicated in with the gray background and the embroidery fonts have the pink background. So that's that. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So to do your embroidery text editing, you're going to just select a font and it'll bring up a menu like so. And it's used to create or adjust text written by embroidery fonts. And to open it, you're just going to select your embroidery font, like I did on the previous menu. And then in the selection, okay, you're going to select the embroidery font in your selection menu. Then you can also select an existing text in the embroidery edit. And then you can touch sequencing and embroidery text editor on the taskbar, which is this one down here. And... Why didn't that do nothing? Let's go back to that again. Let's just do this one. And, okay. It says that it's this little part here that you're going to be able to um, use your text editor on the taskbar. Um, so there's that. We will get all into this stuff later. Um, when we get to the embroidery editing and things like that, I'm just doing a rough kind of showing you everything that what you can do. Okay, so we're going to go back and you just hit it back to go back to your full regular screen. And then to do an embroidery stitch out, let's go ahead and pop another little, oops, <coughs> design pop that flower back up there and while that's loading um, to embroider your design um, you're going to change from your edit screen <coughs> excuse me you're going to change from your edit screen 
So this is your edit screen, and then you're going this button right here is you're going to hit that, and it says please attach your embroidery unit. I do not have my embroidery unit attached, obviously, and it will let you know that obviously you know to attach it. But this is going to let you do your stitch out. It'll tell you what frame. If you do not have your frame already selected on this side, this will let you select your frame. And I'm telling you, this machine can do so many different frames. Um, so I do not have a Creative Deluxe hoop yet. And my, my machine is capable of doing that. That's a 360 by 200, or there is also a 360 by 350 millimeter frame, and I'm hoping to buy that in the future. So that's that portion. Um, when you do um, select your, um, your button to do the stitch out, it's going to show you um, an embroidery stitch out. You can see functions that are useful when you're embroidering. And um, then let's go back to. OK, so now we're going to go back to with sequencing. Um, with sequencing, we're going to select a. Let's see here. With sequencing, you can combine various stitches. So this is just a straight stitch. And you can combine stitches. And I'm not sure quite how to do this yet. Um, with sequencing, you're going to be able to combine various stitching and adjust them. You can use built-in stitches. You can load stitches from an external device or use stitches that you have created. You are able to create your own stitches and I still do not know how to do that yet so um, when we get to that I will show you all how to do that so um, with your sequencing you're going to be able to program tie offs you're going to be able to um, program your stops and your thread snips into your sequence you're going to be able to do all of that and that is going to be coming up um, in our sewing mode and things like that. Um, that will take a little bit. Um, it's it's going to be like whole videos on those subjects. Also on your stitch creator, you can create some really fun stitches. And I believe you can do, if I remember correctly, you can make the stitch as wide as nine millimeter. I think that was correct. Um, so your stitch creator is going to allow you to create your, yes, 9 millimeter. Your stitch creator allows you to create your own 9 millimeter stitch or edit built-in stitches. You can add, delete, move, and adjust your stitch right on your screen. So every single um, stitch point marked with an outline square can be edited. So we'll get to that a little bit later on. I do not know how to do that yet. Um, this is going to be your stitch editor button here. This one here. So let's let's find a stitch. They are using in the manual. I'm trying to find the specific stitch that they use so I can kind of show you a little bit. I'm trying not to go too fast. Okay. They use this one here, and you can see how it pops up. And this is where I, I mentioned that every single little stitch point marked with the outline square can be edited. So I'm going to be able to, um, I don't know how yet, we're going to be able to move these around, I believe. Um, you can start with an empty stitch field and build your stitch or insert a stitch for further adjustments. So I may be able to move this over. Um, I don't know yet. So that's something that we'll be getting into also. Um, I am really sorry that <laughs> this video is kind of all over. Um, 
there, like I said, there's so much to go over on this machine. And if you do have any questions about what I what I've just went over in this video today, please um, ask down below in the in the comments, and I can go a little further more into detail. And we will be doing that. We will definitely be going over each thing um, when I get to that actual topic in the men in the manual that we will be doing that. Um, so this is just like a rough overview of what everything does or um, what um, the selection menu and things, how to get to things. Um, in our next video, I will be going to the settings menu and that is going to be that there. And I will go over everything that what you can do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, if you haven't given it a thumbs up, please give the video a thumbs up. That lets me know that um, you watch the video and that you like the video. And that lets me know to keep going. Um, please leave a comment. Um, that really helps also. That lets me know that um, if you guys do have some, some interest that you, you know I can go further into things if, also with the questions. Okay, rambling again. Sorry about that. Okay, so we'll see you all again soon, and the next video will be all on the settings menu. So we'll see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye.